Do you just want to build slides quick and easy? You don't want to pay for a subscription and you already own Cursor? Well, if that's you, well, I've got the perfect solution for you. We're going to dive in and it'll take a few minutes to show something I've been using personally. Very quick to get up and running, but a little bit harder to master. This jumps straight in. All right, on screen, what I'm showing here is actually a presentation using Slide. It's actually a developer tool to produce slides. You will notice one thing on the top left here. It's actually running my local host, uh, 3001, and then a Slide 1. I just want to jump you through how all of this looks. So you can see here I've got two different points and different uh, highlights pretty much happening. But what comes next is actually a bit more powerful. This is just one of my Pulumi and SST slides that I did earlier. And I just wanted to show you how powerful and useful this could actually be to get some points across very quickly and easily. This is one of my favorite parts right here is putting animations to maybe describe a story. So here you can see I'm asking a few questions and on the right we've got some code. If I press right right now, it will jump to the code to unhighlight it. And I can explain what we're going to make a Next.js application and highlight. Then I can say, hey, we're going to do add a Postgres session to it. And it's going to jump to the Postgres session. Then I'm going to say, hey, we're going to add a DynamoDB. And then it also highlights. So this is actually really powerful that you can use this kind of functionality in the slide. And it's done automatically for you if you use the right prompts to generate it. So essentially, all of this that you're seeing on screen was all generated using Cursor. Everything you're seeing on screen was generated by the Cursor, and it took a few minutes to set up, and it was pretty much done in autopilot. I just gave it some context, and it did the rest. There's a few bugs with it, but it will give you at least 80% of the way there, and you can get you 80% there, and it will also then allow you to download and just generate slides a lot quicker, which you can use for presentations if you're on the go. How can you export this? Well, actually, you have this clever export URL where you can actually go and you can download it if it's a PDF, a PowerPoint presentation or whatever. And you can see all the slides right here quickly for you. All right, so we've seen the product. How do you do this? All right, so here's the phone. And you'll see I've got all these different presentations here. One thing to note, I've made a cursor rule that states how it should um, make different uh, slides to actually generate my presentation. This is nowhere near perfect yet, but it will at least get the job done. Sorry if you're hearing my voice, I'm just a bit sick, but this was nowhere perfect, but it will get the job done to a certain point. And we tell it to give it a goal and how it should think about different principles, component layouts, it's quite extensive. So go about doing this. I'm gonna go back to my browser again, and I'm just gonna to go to, you can use, if you want, I'm just gonna to go to my Anthropic console. I'm just gonna go straight here. I've actually got a, a prompt I worked on, so I can just put in any topic. Let's copy some source material. Let me just grab some source material. Maybe we'll just do a quick uh, tech news. This is gonna take news for whatever reason. Maybe I just wanna use this for LinkedIn. Go tech news on, uh, I'm not getting any of these sources. All right, so I'm just gonna grab this. It's a weird topic, but anyway. All right, source material is this. I'm just going to make eight slides. Again, this is just prompts. You can do this yourself. This just gives me a quick clip that I can work off. Then I can go back and copy this over. All right, to generate my topic, I'm just going to use Anthropic Console over here. See, I'm just adding some source material. I selected a very juicy article on source material, which was a child cursor was telling a vibe coder to code it himself. I found it kind of funny. And then I just made the topic AI coding and vibe coding, where is it going? And I said number of eight slides. So you'll see here I've generated my eight slides for the content. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to delete that so it doesn't affect my thing. Future run. And I'm going to go to cursor. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to tell it new. I want to make a new slide presentation. So I'm literally going to say make me a new slide presentation using this. And one thing you'll note is in my presentation thing, I always tell it to start with, let's do this. That just tells me that it actually is using my instructions that are here because the rules doesn't always work. And I just like to see that it's happening. So we go there, we go, it says, let's do this. Let's see if it will make that presentation for us. We'll give it a few moments. But essentially what it will do 
it will look through that. It will also look at the examples before. It will start making it, creating us the future. And then it's pretty much going to start generating the slides now. And then at the end of this, we can run it and see our slides. And then we can actually export it. It does take a bit of time. The slides intact is a bit odd. So while we're waiting for it, we can just, well, this is way for I'll speed this up, hopefully. It's taking some time. All right, so we can see our slide is done and we can see it's asking for one last thing. I don't know why it needs to make this next. Um, we can see it is done and it's going to be running our new slide on 32. We can just jump there and have a look. And this is the new slide deck that it's made for us from the get-go. Oh, we're already counting an error. So we could probably just copy this and just fix it, but let's have a look. So riser coding agents, so you can put a timeline in for us, quite handy. It's shown the different two aspects of it, even great. I love that it's a little code block too, different color font, just makes it pop that much more. Have an error, uh, see block didn't quite work that well there, probably can go fix that. But for a first take in terms of generating a slide, not too bad. So again, I probably could enhance this a bit with my prompt itself to actually generate it and how it should go on with the slides. I'm probably giving it too much right now, but I wanted to quickly share this guys with you and I'll probably make a future video on this if there's a bit more, if this gains more attention, but enjoy and I'll see you in the next video.